welcome to today's webinar. It's part of the IWA and Canal Mutual Trust training programme for 2023-24. Um, I know many of you recognise quite a lot of the names. So for those that don't know me, I'm Jodie Weather. So I am the Trust Restoration Coordinator. We've also got Jenny Hudson from the IWA joining us today. So on that note, I will hand over uh, to Chris. We're excited to have Chris joining us today. He's from uh, Invest My Community. And the feedback that we've received from many of you was that you wanted a session on this topic, especially at the face-to-face uh, -face funding session that some of you attended back in the summer. You asked for a slightly different take on fundraising and uh, funding and uh, asked for one on, uh, on crowdfunding. So I'm delighted that we're going to be covering that today. So I will hand over to Chris to begin the presentation. Like Jenny said, any questions you have, please do use that Q&A uh, section because after the presentation, we'll be going through those. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Jodie. Let me just share my screen. Yes. Perfect. Okay, well, thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to present today and to meet uh, some of your colleagues and peers. Um, there we go. Uh, so for those who haven't met yet, which is most of you, my name is Chris Rose and I'm the CEO of um, Invest My Community, the fundraising platform for the UK's smaller charities and community organisations such as schools, faith organisations and sports clubs. Over the next few minutes, I'd like to introduce crowdfunding for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term and uh, explain what you should consider when choosing a crowdfunding platform. So we'll cover a brief introduction to Invest My Community. We'll talk about what is crowdfunding. Um, we'll talk about the different types of fundraising campaigns you can run on a platform. Uh, we'll talk about what type of project is suitable for crowdfunding. And this is really, really important because the success of any crowdfunding campaign depends on that, how to plan a communication strategy, and then factors to consider when choosing a platform because there are a few out there um, and it can be a bit overwhelming sometimes. So we'll talk about features, fees and support. And then there's a few minutes at the end uh, for Q&A. So Invest My Community was launched in May 2020 and so far we've helped around 850 organisations, so that's charities uh, and as I mentioned schools, faith orgs and sports clubs to raise well over £2 million pounds from around 37,000 users so far. Um, but what is crowdfunding? So basically crowdfunding is lots of people contributing a little bit of money that in aggregate uh, is a lot of money that pays for an, a project or an initiative. The concept's been around for centuries, uh, but the term crowdfunding has come to prominence in recent years, uh, facilitated through the use of technology. So if you think about, I don't know, you go back centuries, I guess, and, uh, and people putting in or congregations putting in small amounts of money to repair a church roof, uh, for example, that, that is effectively crowdfunding. So there are different types of uh, crowdfunding campaigns. So what is crowdfunding in the context of you? Well, it can play a part in two ways. So firstly, regular giving. So you could create a fundraising page on a, on a crowdfunding platform and you could basically, it could be there in perpetuity and um, supporters can come to that page and they can make a one-off donation or set up a monthly gift, for example. And that's great for generating ongoing incremental revenue. Um, a page will typically uh, mean that a visitor can make a donation through that page and most platformers will offer the facility whereby a supporter can set up their own fundraising page to raise funds on behalf of that charity so for example if one of your supporters was doing a three-piece challenge or running the um, london marathon for example um, they could set up their own page with their own imagery their own content and they could invite invite their friends family colleagues to make a donation through their page which will go straight to you so all the funds raised through their paper get passed directly to, to your charity and this of course can have gift them so on and so forth so it's a really safe and secure way uh, for them to basically raise funds on your behalf um, <clears throat> the second one is crowdfunding a project um, so basically this is a fundraising page that will be uh, used to, to fund a specific project or initiative um, typically, the page will be live for a, a specific period of time, so there will be a start date and an end date, um, typically between one and three months. The bigger the amount you're trying to raise, then typically the longer it will run for, but you've got to be aware of donor fatigue and not keep the page open for too long. So we, we don't recommend having a project page open for more than three months at, at, a, uh, at the absolute most. It will typically have a fundraising target, so you might have a financial goal, a fundraising goal. 
to, I don't know, I'll make this up and you're going to say, Chris, your miles off, but £50,000 for a lock renovation, for example. Um, and maybe you've got a grant for some of that. So say half £25,000 and you need to, to raise the other £25,000. So that would be your fundraising target for the page. And most platforms will have a totalizer so you can see how much has been raised against that target and how much is left to achieve that. And, and you know, if you're particularly successful with your fundraising efforts, then that target can be overachieved. So invest my community, for example, we let every campaign page overachieve. And, I, and as far as I'm aware, every other platform does. Um, again, individual supporters can set up their own fundraising page in support of your fundraising goals. So as I described for regular giving and teams can as well. So um, I don't know if it's going to be quite as relevant for you, but um, sports clubs, for example, if they've got um, a project they want to fund, so new floodlights, for example, for a football pitch, £30,000, they've got 20 teams within the football club. They might assign a target to each team. So they, you know, they set a target of raising £1,000 or £1,500, for example, uh, which in aggregate, if they achieve that, means that the football club gets its new, its new floodlights. Um, the last one is a sponsored event. We've only just introduced this um, beginning of October, actually. It's similar to crowdfunded project, um, but all it means is that um, you get lots of configuration options. So you as the uh, fundraising page controller can set start dates, end dates. You can set minimum sponsorships, um, so minimum sponsorship per individual uh, and sponsorship targets. It just basically puts you in control. You can also collect your own data as well. So I think mean, probably not quite so relevant for you, but um, to contextualize that, we have schools that run Santa runs, for example, and they need to know um, which class the participant belongs to, um, and they need to know what Santa suit size and so on and so forth. So they can configure their sponsored event fundraising page to collect that data automatically. Um, a little bit about investment community. So I know more about that. You can set up as many fundraising pages as you like, totally free of charge. Um, so they're not mutually exclu exclusive. So you can have a regular giving page, for example, to, to be your permanent fundraising page and then set up crowdfunded projects and fundraising pages for specific projects and initiatives um, over time. And again, you know, the, the, I think every other platform does exactly the same in that, uh, in that respect. Again, most platforms um, will facilitate the collection of gift days but not all of them, so be careful about that. Some don't do it at all. Some will collect the data and then pass the data for you to then submit a gift aid claim. And some, like I said, will actually submit the gift aid claim to HMRC on your behalf. All you need to do is nominate us as, a, as an agent, basically. Uh, communication is key. Um, so I mentioned the key to success for any campaign is planning a communication strategy. And in that context, there are three things to consider. So identifying your network, it's usually a lot bigger than you than you think it is. Um, is this one in the context? Not sure I'm talking about school charity. Um, but you've got clearly you, you, yourselves, your supporters, people who have signed up to uh, your charity newsletters, for example. Um, but you might have local influencers. Um, you might have the local authority might be interested in providing you support suppliers and service providers so for example we have schools that run um, fundraising campaigns for a spirit project and they go out to their facilities providers their catering providers their uniform providers and they and they're successful in getting donations for those guys again i don't know how relevant that is in the context of of your organization but it's worth bearing in mind um so i identify a network as i mentioned it's bigger than you think um it's important to create the content across all channels. So think about how you can reach your, your network, your audience. So think about emails. So presumably you have a contact database of supporters, I'm, I'm assuming. Social media is very important these days, particularly Facebook, um, which has uh, local community groups and probably community uh, groups for, for your organisation. And even press releases. So if the project's particularly interesting, um, and I would expect that yours probably are uh, to the local community, uh, then the local press may want to get involved in an article for you as well. And we can help you draft all of those. Um, planning and delivering a consistent and comprehensive communication strategy is really important. And, and it starts with pre-socialising. So when I say pre-socialising, what I mean is before you launch your fundraising 
campaign, you start to let your audience know that you're going to be asking for their support. So you do that, I would suggest, at least two or three times before you actually launch your page. So they're already warmed up. They know what you're trying to achieve. They know what the project's all about. They know that you're going to be asking for support. And subconsciously, they're already minded to provide some support. If you hit people cold on day one, the campaign is launched, then people are a bit like, what's this? I don't you know. I don't know. I don't know what this is all about. So basically, you want your audience. And then as you progress through the campaign, particularly in the context of a project one, um, reach out to your supporter network uh, and to Chris, your community. Sorry, can I yeah. just interrupt? Um, there's a couple of them saying that they can't read you, read what's on the slide. Are they going to be able to have a copy of it later? Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah this there's a couple keep getting frozen, so I don't know whether it's their issue, theirs or whether you whether it's your internet connection. That's... Okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but I Just so you're okay aware, but as long as they can have a copy of the slides, yeah, 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 absolutely. If I yeah. let them know that now, we'll be all right. Yeah, thank no, you. A, there is a lot of detail in that slide. It's just to indicate it's indicative, really. It's just to say actually your network is really big. Um, so yeah, so particularly with the project campaign, I was talking about pre-socializing. When you go through that um, project campaign, it's important to reach out when you hit milestones. So, for example, if you hit twenty-five percent of your target. Let everybody know, say thank you for your support so far. And say, come on, let's keep going. Same when you get to 75%, uh, sorry, 50%, 75%, and 90%. It's, you know, the message is, is really important. You know, we're almost over the line, guys. You know, one last push, push and we can, we can do this. Um, <clears throat> and then clearly, once you achieve your target, then you thank your supporters. The next step is also critical to retaining engagement. So share outcomes. So if you're raising that, and again, contextually, I'm probably completely off, but that £50,000 for a lock renovation, you know, when that lock has been renovated and it's been reopened and the mayor's cut the ribbon, let your supporters know, let them know what the outcome of the project was, let them know the difference that their contribution made. And that really, that, that's where they get the reward for providing their support to you. Hopefully that makes sense. We can provide the, the tools of support to help with all of that. Um, so you've decided that crowdfunding can make a difference to your charity and the wider community. So what factors could, should you consider when choosing a platform? Uh, because there are a few out there. There are three things to consider in our opinion, features, uh, fees and support. So ooh, that's a that was. So looking at features first, so look at the, the platform itself and look at um, what it provides you in terms of fundraising features to, to get your community engaged and supporting you. Um, so look at a standard fundraising page. Do they give you lots of content? Do they enable you to upload a gallery of images? Can you upload videos? What tools do they provide to, um, or what features do they provide to help you get that engagement? So. Do they uh, facilitate individual fundraising? Do they facilitate teams fundraising? Do they do the sponsored events? All that sort of thing. Um, that's really important. You might want to consider contactless donations. So over the last few years, contactless devices um, earned a degree of popularity. Um, we don't know, I'll be honest, in my opinion, they've got a finite lifespan. We, we actually partnered with a company that installed contactless um, donation devices um, and it wasn't very successful because there was a they're expensive to buy expensive to lease but actually more importantly there are issues around connectivity um, power and security um, and, and so unfortunately that uh, that didn't work for for our clients what we do instead is we um, provide a qr code on every fundraising page which is downloadable um, so that can be in, uh, attached to donation buckets, for example, it can be inserted in leaflets or posters. Um, and basically, somebody can just scan that QR code with their smartphone and make a donation safely, securely through their own device. Um, so totally free, um, no devices to, to buy or lease and no power or connectivity or security issues. Um, what I've got in that middle section there is a donation card. So this is something we've done for quite a few charities and uh, faith organizations which is basically we we print um, a business card sized piece of card with a qr code on and they can be distributed at events or uh, left in foyers or receptions i guess foyers and receptions probably left for a few years um, and the third thing to consider is um, your own websites and how you can facilitate a donation through that um, 
So there are providers out there, such as PayPal, for example, um, who will provide a donation button. You can insert that in your um, website. Uh, we also provide a donation button. So that can be embedded in your, your website or anywhere, really. And a visitor to the website clicks the button and they get taken straight through to make a donation. So all of those features now need to be uh, borne in mind. You need to consider your own needs and requirements and, and work out which platform offers the features and, and the functionality that, that you require. Um, oh, gift aid. Yep, gift aid is very important. So you, I'm sure you're very familiar with gift aid and, uh, and how that works. Um, but just to reiterate, not all platforms um, will enable the collection of gift aid data um, and some will collect the data and pass it to you um, and some will submit a gift aid claim on your behalf. Um, so again, that uh, I, I guess if the platform submits the gift aid claim on your behalf, then that's quite valuable because you're not using your own valuable time to do that. Um, so that's worth bearing in mind as well. So fees. Um, <clears throat> As I mentioned, there are, there are a few platforms out there. Um, the fee structures can be, they're, they're quite disparate and they can be very complicated. Um, you know, we obviously undertake a, an audit of our competitors from time to time. And sometimes it's so difficult to work out what they actually charge. Um, we have to write to the, to the platform clearly incognito and say, okay, we don't actually know what you charge. Um, but typically a platform will charge, <clears throat> charge or not charge a setup fee. So they'll say, okay, um, it's gonna cost you 150 pounds just to register on our platform. Um, some platforms charge a subscription fee. So just giving, for example, they'll charge a subscription fee just to, just to be listed on their platform. Uh, and some will charge platform fees. Um, going into slight sales mode, but Invest My Community, we're committed to providing affordable access to, to all charities and all community organisations. Um, and we don't charge a setup fee, we don't charge a subscription fee, and we charge we don't charge a platform fee either. So there's, there's no charge to start fundraising with us. Pretty well every platform that I'm aware of, I can't think of any that don't, charges a payment processing fee. So that's a fee for processing the, the actual donation. And that's really passing on the um, costs that we incur from our payment processes and the merchant service provider. Um, again, that's worth looking at because uh, they can be quite significant. So we charge 1.4% plus 20p. Um, we know platforms that charge 2.9% plus 20p. Um, the mode donation, so the most common donation is £10. So that 2.9% uh, that versus 1.4% is, is quite significant. That's a uh, you know, 1.5% difference uh, in reality. Um, some platforms charge a small fee for processing gift aid, um, which we do, uh, just giving due to. So we charge 5% um, of the gift aid submitted to HMRC on your behalf. And then some platforms invite donors to add a bunch of contribution on top of their donation to cover the platform costs. And that's why they, they don't charge a platform fee. Effectively, that's their that's their main source of revenue, really. So that, that is, you know, an invitation to, to contribute to the platform costs so that the charity doesn't get charged. So hopefully that makes sense. But the key things are consider the fixed costs to start fundraising for your platform. So look at setup fees, look at subscription fees. And then um, when you get to the, the variable fees, such as platform fees, payment processing uh, costs and gift aid, just, just have a good look around and make sure you're, you're familiar. And, and if the platform you feel is being a bit opaque in terms of what they charge, and, and many are, then uh, then do drop them a note and, uh, and ask the question. Um, the last thing is the support that you provide. So we quickly realized when we launched the platform um, that many of our client organizations didn't necessarily have digital fundraising expertise or resource in-house and they needed a bit more support. Um, so we provide that, we've got a small team of client success managers who will help you brainstorm fundraising ideas. They'll help you plan that communication strategy, which as I mentioned is, is absolutely critical. And they'll provide ongoing monitoring and advice um, whilst you're fundraising to make sure you achieve your goals. Some platforms, I'll be honest, most platforms don't provide any support. Some platforms provide support if you commit to raise a certain amount per annum, so £50,000, for example. Um, so again, it's worth looking around, thinking about your own skills and expertise within your organisation, 
and what you need and then and then look around at the different providers and uh, see what they may or may not work for you um what have we got yes so um just to, to close off then so the key to success so pick the right project to to raise funds for i guess yours are fairly defined in the context of uh river and canal restoration um mind map your network so going back to i think it was jenny's point and this slide deck will be shared afterwards and you'll see that uh, network map but we can share that separately as well um and, and really you know open your mind and think about just how big your network is because i said it is it's going to be bigger than you think um create an engaging fundraising page so um you know get your content right um but use the facility to upload a gallery of images um again i'm just talking to content to invest my community we invite you to upload up to up to three videos um which are optional but you know they're really powerful we find plan your communication strategy share 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 is absolutely critical there's no point in creating the best fundraising page in the world with the most uh, amazing videos and brilliant images if you don't share it and and you know use your own contact databases um, so send out you know lots of emails use social media and as i mentioned you know i think your projects in particular um, are probably worthy of a, a column or two in the local paper uh, and on the local press's website so get in touch with those guys as well and share the outcome i mentioned that earlier as well this is really important you know because what you don't want is somebody just coming and making a donation uh, making that transaction and walking away if you share the outcome and you let them know the difference that their contribution has made to your organization to your project and to the local community you've got them engaged and, and you know the next time you're looking for something uh you're looking for support they'll hopefully be minded to provide that support again and last but not least um, pick the right platform so think about the features um what you need um, think about the fees make sure that you understand exactly what you're going to be charged uh, and lastly think about support and whether you require that and, and which platforms provide that um, and that was it if you want to speak to anybody in our team um, Julie Beale heads up our team of campaign managers client success managers um, we offer everybody a complimentary uh, introductory call um, which can be booked online at the time of your convenience and uh, she'll be more than happy to talk a bit more about Invest My Community and how her team can help you achieve your fundraising goals. So I think that was it. Hopefully that answered most of your questions, but uh, well, I'm, of course, happy to take, uh, take questions now. Shall I stop sharing, Jodie? Thanks, Chris. Yes, you can do. And of course, yes, we'll um, we'll share the slides around uh, for everybody as well. Uh, as Jenny mentioned, so she, they've got those contact details. Um, that was great. Thank you, Chris. I, uh, I certainly learned a lot about, about crowdfunding that I uh, wasn't aware of before. And I think the bit about uh, communication strategy was uh, was really interesting and a, a great point. We have had a um, question or two come through. So I'll just uh, yeah. I'll just go through that one and give people an opportunity as well, um, as we're answering those, just to type any more in the Q&A box. So the yeah. first question uh, that we've had is, that is it possible to embed a donation button on Facebook? uh that's a good question i mean that's not sure <laughs> i don't know um what you can do is you can certainly link the url that's the www dot uh in a facebook post so that somebody clicks on that it goes straight into the donation process um yeah i don't know actually if you can embed a, a button directly into facebook but you can certainly embed a link in there for sure um to be quite honest i would suggest that you probably um wrap the invitation to donate in a post and you know that's a, that's a critical communication channel in terms of you know letting people know what you're doing what the project's intended to achieve and, and how you're progressing and you know lots of communication I, you know I, again i know i'm repeating myself but um you can have the best campaign in the world the best fundraising page in the world but you've got to share 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 shout 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 so you know whether you can embed a button directly in facebook I, I don't honestly know but there you know lots of posts lots of communication lots of updates share the outcome uh, and invite them to make a donation through the url for sure brilliant thanks chris another one that's come through is um regarding uh, do you have any tools to create fundraising page on the platform 
So the onboarding process is, is really straightforward. I mean, clearly it, it is a, it's an investment in time, but not a huge amount. Um, so you're taken through the steps, basically. So there are three steps to registering and, and creating a fundraising page. The first one is the, the person registering the charity um, needs to provide some details. We have to do a little bit of due diligence to comply with the charities commission and HMRC requirements. So we need a few personal details. We don't do a credit check. We just make sure you are who you say you are, basically. So the details are effectively your uh, name, home address, date of birth, and we just bang it into a database and it says, yes, this person is real. That's that. That's step one. The second step is providing details of the organisation. So the charity name, address, uh, charity commission number, um, gift aid information, all that sort of thing. Um, where where you know uh, where people can find you. Um, social media links they're critical. Um, so that's step two. And then the third step is basically creating the fundraising page. Um, but you're you're taken through that so it's it's quite intuitive so first of all you know what you want to call your fundraising page have you got a fundraising target if it's a project start and end date so remember i mentioned that for a project campaign we, we suggest it's live for between one and three months um, and then you're invited to provide some content around the organization and what it does and then why you're raising funds and how those funds are going to be used and then the next and final step is basically uploading your your media, so any images and, and videos. But it's it, you're you're taking through it, and it is quite logical and I hope quite straightforward. So you know, it's radio buttons, yes, no, yes, no, and click here to upload an image, that sort of thing. Um, but as I mentioned, our client success managers are on hand to to help with all of that um, if needed. So they'll they'll help. Um, you know, brainstorm fundraising ideas and they come up with some brilliant random stuff so they're worth having a chat with. Um, they'll help you to to create your campaign page. So they'll give you advice in terms of the content and how it should be structured and how the ask should be structured. And then they'll provide the ongoing monitoring advice. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, you know, most people may have to get through it, but, but you know, we, we do have our team on hand to, to provide a bit of help. And once the campaign page is live and it's published, you know, it's editable. So if you want to provide an update in terms of um, your written content progress, um, updated images or whatever, then, then you can do that anytime. Great. Thanks, Chris. We, we did have a question come through, which was regarding your own personal opinion on the best kind of platform. However, as you are CEO of Invest My Community, I think Does it's safe to say <laughs> that you would obviously... Uh, um, endorse your your own platform, but you well, need I think, so. What I would say, yes, I clearly I, I I'm interested in, in you know my platform selling it. What I would say is that we set out from day one to make to take digital fundraising from transactional to relational. And what I what I mean by that is the likes of just giving to a great job for big charities, you know. So big charities pay a subscription, they're listed on there, and then they rely on people like us running the London Marathon and going. Do you know what I'm going to raise my cancer research while I'm doing it. Um, eighty percent of donations through just giving go to just four percent of charities. There, are, there is no way to build that longevity in the relationship, um, you know. And and all the time we're looking at how we can add features and functions to to take that digital fundraising from transactional to relational to lock in long term engagement for your success. And, and that's what we continue to do. You know, I mean the the phrase that we use which is a bit naff really is uh, reverse engineer the platform so we talk to our clients we listen to our clients and they say this is what we need Chris and we have a little chat in turn and we go do you know what that makes sense let's build that uh, and that's what we do and that's what we'll continue to do um, so you know the sponsored event feature for example we only launched that last month but that was in response to client request early next year we'll be launching online raffles and event ticketing and that sort of thing now we're going to start to build out social network features as well. So effectively, you can communicate with your audience and, and lock in that engagement. So, yeah, I mean, clearly, I think our platform, you know, is, is the way to go for the smaller charities um, who do need a bit more support, uh, who do need a few more features. But it's horses for courses, you know, if you're if you are cancer research, then just giving is just fine. Um, thanks for that. Um, there are a couple of follow on ones for that one. Sue says, are these um, platforms only for charities? Mm -mm. 
No, so we, we support our two biggest sectors are charities and schools, um, followed by faith, so uh, churches. Uh, and we haven't got very many sports clubs at the moment, but uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we cover any charity, any community organisation, basically. And that's why we're called Invest My Community. It's all about that community. It's all about local, you know, so really getting that engagement. And, you know, there are a lot of individuals and families that um, and communities that rely on the organisations that we that we serve. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the space we want to continue to support and, and, and you know, grow. Yeah, I'm not sure whether Sue always I was thinking about you see families um doing fund crowd funding for a child to go for an operation or things like that. So yeah, we don't do individual fundraising. And uh, we are we could do get asked occasionally. Um we haven't so far. Um and the reason actually is the risk of fraud. So there's been quite a bit in the press over the years about fraudulent campaigns, for example, so families asking for money for cancer operation or whatever and then absconding. Um, we, we've talked to other platforms who do that and actually they say the biggest risk is people setting up pages and then using stolen debit cards or credit cards to put money through the platform quickly and then take it. I'm not saying we'd never do it, but I think we would think carefully before we, we start uh, providing that service. At the moment, we're exclusively organisations, you know, so we can verify the ID of a person registered in the organisation, we verify the organisation itself, we verify their bank details before we make transfers. And so far, touch wood, we, we haven't had any issues. Thank, thank you for that. Um, Wynne has asked, says, Canal Restoration is an expensive business. Mm, Three so months. pounds is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Three months doesn't seem very long for raising a large amount of money. No, do, no. Some, do some projects have a longer time? Yeah, yeah, I think um, absolutely. So the bigger the goal, then clearly the longer the campaign should run. And, uh, you know, there's no... So bear in mind, most of our project campaigns that we've hosted so far have been around schools, for example, and they're looking for £10,000 for laptops or £20,000 for a new school programme or whatever. Clearly, if you're, you know, looking for £500,000 for you know, canal restoration project or whatever, then you would want to have it open for, for a lot longer and probably run lots of initiatives during that period as well. So, so yeah, of course, it makes sense. Can I just ask a question on that side? Um, with some funding pots and that, if you apply for lottery and that, it's you need match funding and it has to be tied, it can't be tied to this, that and the other. So doing it through crowdfunding, could that be a match fund that's yeah. an open, open source match fund? Yeah, actually, it's interesting. I don't know so much about your sector, but certainly in, uh, in, in sports clubs, you know, they apply for grants for football ground improvement or whatever. Um, and it's prerequisite that they demonstrate they've explored every means to raise funds themselves. So crowdfunding plays an important part in that. Um, and absolutely, you can invite corporate sponsors to to match fund and so on. That's something that we that we want to start uh, developing next year. Actually, so one thing that I have in mind is that um, we'd like to develop a feature whereby corporate sponsors can make a donation of a, of a certain amount, and the charity would set that certain amount. So thousand pounds, five thousand pounds, ten thousand pounds, whatever. And if they make that donation and they get their logo on, on your fundraising page, which could be clickable to go through to that organisation. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's something that's doable. Uh, and we could potentially develop a specific match funding feature as well. But, um, you know, that, that the corporate donors are actually, you know, if you reach out to local businesses, you know, they, they can be pretty, pretty supportive, actually. We've, we've, we've been quite surprised at the number of quite large donations that local companies and local businesses have made. Um, so it's definitely worth exploring that. Go on. Thank you very much, Chris. I was just going to say there hasn't, there isn't, that was the last question that's come up so far, but we can give it another couple of minutes to see if uh, any, uh, any other questions uh, come through. But uh, yeah. thanks very much. Thanks very much. I think those questions have really built on the uh, on your presentation and kind of explored that that process a little bit a little bit further, which is great. We'll see if anyone's got 
any more questions before we uh, start to wrap up today's webinar? Well, they've done a really bad job, a really good job. <laughs> Silent from the audience. Well, we, we have had a couple of people that had to leave early and they um, they sent on their thanks, Chris, and said it's been really informative. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Very useful session. There you go. There's comments coming through saying very useful. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. I'll send the deck over after the uh, session. So, so you've got that. That's brilliant. Distribute it as you see fit. Thank yeah. you. I will send the presentation out um, one second once Chris, I, I receive it from Chris, I will send that to everybody. There will then be the recording. Um, I'll get it off to Summer who will edit, uh, edit it and get it ready to put on the YouTube. Once it's on the YouTube and I get the link, that will then also be sent out. Um, and I'll include you in that as well, Chris. So, Thank you. Um, Yes, I'm, I'm sure that Summer is brilliant at any technical hitches. You can just uh, edit those out if they never happened, which is which is great. Um, <laughs> That's a feature so, of technology, isn't it? That's it. Okay, so it doesn't want any more questions come through, um, but it is time to wrap up today's webinar now. So thanks, Chris, for taking the time to deliver the webinar and, okay. um, and for answering our, our questions as well. Um, you can see from the, the feedback that's coming already that it's been really useful uh, to people oh, on the good. call today. Um, and I thank everyone for joining us, you know, sharing your um, your questions with us today. And we do have another uh, webinar happening in January, which is being uh, facilitated by Alison Smedley from the IWA. And the link to book onto that one will be available in the next couple of weeks. And in the meantime, you've got lots of resources on Outbooth, the Canal of Trust and IWA's website uh, and also in the Facebook group. So thanks again to everybody. Thanks, uh, Michael. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Chris. And thanks, everyone, for joining. And hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week. Take care, and uh, we'll uh, see you again soon. Thanks, all.